Yeah, what is up, everybody? Thanks for joining the live stream. Welcome to another episode of uh, Visual Studio Code live stream on this Thursday. And once again, I want to first uh, give a shout out to all the early birds that made it out here and has been waiting in time. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the early birds that come in on time. I've always been an early person and uh, I love it when uh, people are there just like waiting. I don't think it's it's always that great to be fashionably late. Um, and But I also appreciate everyone that's joining. So thanks to everybody that's joining the stream. Just in general, okay? I don't want someone to be here like, hey, I just joined. What am I, chopped liver? I couldn't make it here earlier. I had like prior obligations. Uh, let's give a... Uh, some, some some shout outs to everybody, uh, producer, some lower third love saying hello to everyone, you know. Um, today, by the way, is uh, Thursday. And uh, if you are familiar with like uh, me doing some of the live streams here and a few of like our other guests also, we introduced a new segment called uh, Throwback TikTok Thursday. Throwback TikTok Thursday. Throwback TikTok Thursday. Try to say that really fast, 10 times. See how that goes. Um, let's go ahead and see uh, what we got before we uh, get the show started. Introducing the segment. Tell me you're a developer without telling me you're a developer. I'll go first. No, I don't want to build that app for you for free for 50% of some company that doesn't exist yet. Bye. A few years later. Your company went public? I could have been somebody. Oh, all of the painful feeling of missed opportunity makes your heart break. <laughs> makes you want to go to the hospital. Hindsight is twenty twenty. All right, folks, um, without any further ado, I want to go ahead and get this show started. I am excited. I hope you are, too. We have an awesome guest that's going to be uh, demonstrating, uh, that, that's going to be doing like a really good demonstra get demonstration. I'm going to let her tell you about what she's going to be uh, talking about. Um, but without any further ado, I want us to welcome Dr. Sarah Kaiser. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Sarah. Uh, how you doing? Good. It's uh, probably my earliest meeting so far in a while, but <laughs> I am really excited to be here and kind of show you how I work with Jupyter Notebooks uh, in VS Code most days. <laughs> nice Jupyter Notebook. So now I'm I I know about Jupyter Notebooks. I'm not an expert in it. But for some of us who have never heard of it at all, can you first uh, tell us what is a Jupyter Notebooks? Absolutely. So um, Python is a very popular programming language and is basically a Jupyter Notebook is kind of like a REPL, but where you can kind of go back and forth and reevaluate different things you've already uh, kind of typed in. So. I mean, it actually does kind of feel like a Word document, except rather than having, you know, one script file. Okay. There are just basically blocks of code and why I really like using them. Um, my background is I, I did a PhD in quantum computing and did like lots of physics experimentalist stuff. I've done a lot of like machine learning and data science things. I like notebooks because they're, I feel like a little bit easier to communicate uh, like if I make, I do a lot of prototyping, right? <laughs> a lot less production, but a lot more prototyping. And so this way I can actually type in, you know, like I can have nice markdown descriptions because you can have code and kind of prose and images all mixed together. Um, so it's kind of like Instadocs. <laughs> like I don't have to write additional things. I can just have my code with everything and it looks nice. Cool, cool, cool. Um... Have you, when was the first time you heard about Jupyter Notebooks? How, how were you even introduced to it? I was introduced to it, I think, when I was trying to do some homework <laughs> for, okay. for, uh, for university. And honestly, I was kind of scared of the command line at that point because I was mainly a physics and math student. Like, 
I did, you know, I, I had a Linux machine, but wasn't like super comfortable with stuff. And so um, rather than like writing scripts and running a bunch of stuff from the command line, someone showed me I could just type Jupyter Notebook and then I got a, a browser <laughs> with places where I could run code and importantly, kind of like iterate. Like I didn't have to commit to running <laughs> the whole script each time because right. I wasn't very good at doing like modular design. And I just pretty much always had one giant script file. <laughs> So um, mm -hmm. this was way faster to prototype and iterate. And I basically, I've used them to automate uh, like scientific experiments that are sending photons to space uh, to test VR hardware. Like they're, they're awesome. And also come in different languages <laughs> and different flavors. So Python is, I think, one of the most common ones that use notebooks, but Jupiter is Julia, Python, and R <laughs> is kind of the history. Those three were originally supported, and lots of other languages, even .NET, actually have Jupyter kernel support. So there's kind of the Jupyter Notebook UI, and then there's all kinds of different kernels you can hook up to the back for code execution. Nice. Um, yeah, when I first heard about it, I just knew about it being used uh, with uh, Python, but that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to make everybody else that has their own favorite languages a little bit happier, you know, making their way. So, all right, well, how about uh, let's uh, just jump right into it and uh, take a look at what we've got. Awesome. So I have a blank window. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so I have used notebooks. There's lots of different editors for notebooks. Um, I have been using VS Code for pretty much all my other code editing. And what I learned a while ago is that you can actually open notebooks and work with notebooks in VS Code. So basically my thesis TLDR for today is I wanna show you kind of how I use notebooks in VS Code. Um, there's kind of some big features and then some like tips and tricks that I've kind of figured out <laughs> along the way. So we'll kind of go through setting up projects, uh, editing and kind of the actual UI sorts of things. Uh, okay. executing, debugging, stuff like that, and um, then how you can share stuff. So those are going to be the main ideas. So um, also And I'd like to you. tell everybody in the chat, like, if you have any questions, feel free to just throw them out there. We're going to make this as interactive as possible. Um, if the font is uh, good for you guys and you're able to see it easily, just drop a one in the chat. If not, drop a two and we'll have a... Sarah, increase it, okay? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and I see folks in the chat. Yeah, there's a lot of times you can also support other custom languages. Like I also use Jupyter Notebooks for Q Sharp, which is a uh, quantum computing programming language. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool extensible framework. So um, yeah, let's go. Uh, I have a repo here um, that we'll, I'll share a link to in a bit, but basically, I have a Jupyter Notebook here <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that I decided, I, you know, this is a standard problem, I think, with data science sorts of demos and stuff. It's like, what data do you use? Like, obviously, you probably have stuff that you need to use for work. Um, I enjoy learning about open source projects, not only the code, but like kind of how the communities work. And uh, I've recently gotten kind of good, maybe, <laughs> at scraping the GitHub API uh, to kind of get metadata about repos. So basically what we're going to do today <laughs> is our data set will be stuff about Jupyter repos on GitHub, and we're doing it in Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, Inception, right. Ju Ju Jupyter Inception. <laughs> um, so before I get too far into it, um, if you want to use Python and uh, Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code, probably the good first thing to do, if you haven't already, is to install the two extensions that kind of support that. Um, so those being very simply <laughs> Python, uh, which, uh, oop, let's make this so you can see the picture. Yeah, so we've got Python here, and we also have uh, Jupyter. So both Python. of those. By the way, someone was just asking, where else is this being uh, streamed? This is being streamed also on Learn TV. Uh, producer, if you could drop like in the chat, like where else? Yeah, yeah, she's just dropping right now where else people could see this. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Sarah. Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Um, I also saw someone in the comments saying that uh, diffs of notebooks, so like if you change something and you're trying to see what's changed, uh, the actual serialization of these is JSON. So if I look at the raw version of this <laughs> doing diffs, it's really kind of gross. But I'll show you how you can actually do rich diffs in VS Code. So <laughs> stay tuned. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you're going to want to install the Python extension and the Jupyter extension here. They add uh, a couple different things that make things easy. Um, also, for all the other, I'll be talking about a fair few other extensions. Uh, I put a bunch of them in the readme for this repo, if you want to open. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of check all those out there later. Don't worry, I've documented it. <laughs> um, go back to the notebook, please. Cool. So yeah, this is this is a notebook if you haven't seen them before. Uh, you can see here I've got kind of like markdown cells. So if I double click on it, uh, it's markdown. <laughs> uh, evaluating mm -hmm. the cells is uh, shift enter. So I can do that, have it back to like pretty. <laughs> um, and things also like if you do things with LaTeX or equations uh, for your documentation, maybe you do machine learning or something all of the like equations nicely format just out of the box, which is super cool. So yeah, let's actually just start getting some data. Um, so I will go down here to my first code cell. Uh, you can see also we've got a, a lot of buttons <laughs> and a lot of options here. Um, first and foremostly, all the stuff about the notebook interface, uh, all the UI elements are pretty easily customizable. So Every different, uh, there are tons of different notebook editors out there already. Like I grew grew up using Jupyter Notebooks Classic. So that's basically just this notebook in a browser tab. Um, but there's other things like uh, Collaboratory um, or Jupyter Lab, all kinds of fancy customizations. So that's why there's like lots of UI options here. So you can customize it to however you like. Um, they work in they work in conjunction with the extension or like are they like alternatives like modified they're, or... they're mainly alternatives for the most part like you know if you don't want to have kind of the buttons pop up here you can turn them off uh, a lot of the stuff is redundant so if you you know if i don't want to see the play buttons here on the side i can turn them off stuff like that generally okay. i Roll with a much more minimal <laughs> interface. Uh, but what I've done here is the what you see for the UI is what you'll get out of the box. So um, no, nothing it. here will be a surprise. <laughs> At least so now, uh, now uh, Freylight Cognin asked if uh, when should uh, they learn Jupyter Notebooks in their Python journey? Does it matter if you learn it a little later on? Is that better or can you just start right into very beginning if you're learning Python or is it going to be too intimidating, you think? I mean, I think it's in terms of like learning, if, if this is learning Python, learning Jupyter Notebooks like only makes it about this much, <laughs> this much harder. <laughs> so okay. because really the main part here is there is Python. You know, I could write comments in Python, right? If I, you know, add my, uh, I, I'm a comment, you know, you can do stuff like that. Um, but basically all we're doing now is we're just moving, uh, this to a new cell. So like if I wanted to add a markdown cell here, I could do that. <laughs> I could finish the word maybe. Um, and maybe I want to make it bullets or something like that. So, yep. <laughs> we're just basically making it easier to format comments. So yeah, so I, a lot. Nice. It sounds Sorry, like. So it really doesn't matter, it sounds like, because it's not that much of an extra learning curve because you started early. Yeah, I think probably the biggest, like there isn't a lot of technical things to learn generally, uh, unless you're getting really, really fancy writing plugins and stuff. Uh, but it's mainly just, <laughs> there's like the keyboard shortcut of shift enter. <laughs> That's how okay. you evaluate the cells. So um, yeah. And you'll find a lot of documentation, especially for Python projects, will actually have notebooks associated with. So you might actually see, you know, they'll read the docs page and then there's like a little button like 
run in Binder or something like that. And that'll take you to a Jupyter Notebook or you can download it and just run the code right from there. So, um, okay. yeah. So, um, okay, by the way, are you near an airport? I keep hearing airplanes. I live in Seattle near Lake Union, uh, which has a bunch of float planes. I should probably close my window, but I also uh, get pretty high CO2 in here. So. <laughs> I, it's even more exciting. It sounds like we're on a battleship, like <laughs> war times. <laughs> I'm sorry. They aren't usually this bad. Maybe everybody's like racing to Vancouver for some reason. <laughs> well, yeah. um, Cool. So yeah, we've got this uh, UI here. Um, probably the most important thing actually <laughs> before we run this is we need to, like I said, you can have different languages. Um, you know, we're going to be using Python here, but when you have Python on your, on your machine, um, generally you don't just have Python. You have environments, you have probably multiple different versions of Python on your path. Uh, my environment story is awful. <laughs> But just like in uh, pretty much every other notebook interface here in the top right, you'll have an option to select how, basically, where do you want to run this code? So you can see here, okay, I've been running it in the environment that I want, ghstats or right. GitHub stats. Um, but it'll find VS Code in the Jupyter extension will find, um, hopefully, all the other kind of environments it finds on your system. So it's found my global path uh, Python environments. Um, these are all local on my machine, but one of the awesome things here is like, say I'm on my potato laptop or something like that from uh, four years ago, uh, and I want to connect to compute somewhere else because this is not going to cut it. I'm doing machine learning things. I need a GPU. You can connect to other servers. So this could be as simple as I have another you know, desktop or something uh, in my house, and I just use like the local host and connect to the port there. Um, but you can also uh, remotely connect to different cloud hosting services or um, GitHub has a really cool feature uh, rolling out code, code spaces, which basically again, spins up a kernel on some sort of cloud compute and then you just connect to it here locally. So there are yeah. lots of options because I don't trust my, internet connections and or bandwidth, <laughs> I'm just using my, my local kernel here. So we've selected that. Um, great. So I can, I can do shift enter to run the cell. I can also hit this play button here to run the cell. Um, and yeah, you'll see, you'll see lots of other buttons. I'll try to explain them kind of as we go, but just know you don't have to like know all of them. Many are redundant. <laughs> you can see yeah, the code right down. It seems like the main one that you'll use are the execute button every time you're changing your code. And that's the one that's right there on the upper left-hand corner, right? Yep, that's that's basically it. Um, and do you use a shortcut also for that? Is there a shortcut? Yep, uh, shift enter is how you run a cell. So like if you hit enter, it does what you expect. It gives you a new line, but shift enter is how you actually run it. Um, also, Jupyter Notebooks have kind of like standard keyboard shortcuts where you do like, escape, type some letters and hit escape again. So like if I wanted to, from here, I'm gonna hit, uh, oh, I don't have, um, do I have screencast mode on? Oh, there we go. <laughs> now you can see what I'm typing. Uh, this is a great feature in VS Code, by the way. So if I do uh, escape, B escape, that makes a cell below. And now I can keep typing. Like basically I could do all of this by the keyboard if you're, a more less mouse person, <laughs> uh, which I tend to be. Um, but uh, yeah, all, all of the keyboard shortcuts that you expect from other Jupyter Notebook clients and stuff all work here. Cool. Um, now on the screen, I, when you were saying escape B, when you were mentioning the shortcuts, was that on your screen that was coming up? I'm wondering if that was our producer. That oh, no, that's on, that that's on me. That was me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. If you're doing uh, live streams in via, uh, like, or rather, if you're trying to like record something in VS Code or um, do a live stream like this, if you go to the command palette, so that's Control Shift P, uh, there is a setting for just VS Code. This is nothing notebook specific, uh, but you can toggle screencast mode. So it just, if you are 
it doesn't do it when I'm just typing letters, <laughs> but if I hit something that's like a modifier uh, or it notices as a keyboard shortcut, it will okay. let you know. <laughs> right, Otherwise, cool. it just sounds like I'm tippy tapping. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. Awesome. Um, cool. So we'll get rid of that cell. Uh, let's actually get some data here. So um, I will. We, we loaded a couple packages here, um, standard ones that you might expect for Python. We're going to be using pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Um, basically, the only interesting additional one is um, the this GH API. So there is no official GitHub Python API package. <laughs> That's a lot of words in sequence. Um, but this is basically the Python package uh, that GitHub says, hey, if you're working in Python and want to get information about repos and stuff on, on GitHub, this is the right one to use. So we can do that and then create an instance of that uh, API class, basically. Um, and you'll see probably one of the other, or one of our first <laughs> interesting uh, UI things here, which actually, again, is not notebook specific, but can be really helpful in notebooks, which is this um, in, in lay hinting, I think is the name of the setting. <laughs> uh, cool. But basically, uh, other languages and stuff kind of have this, but the VS code that's kind of uh, understanding and, and tracking what code you're running and what packages you have loaded, uh, that tool here in VS Code is called PyLance for Python. It says, hey, I see you're running this code, <laughs> and I know that this returns a type just called GHAPI. And so it's actually adding this hint in here to you, because this would be the syntax like, I could manually type this, and this is type hinting in Python. This is <laughs> the intent here is not to be a tutorial on Python exactly, but basically, VS Code can helpfully show you type hints if you are too lazy to type them in, <laughs> or right. maybe don't exactly know what types might populate there. So I have this I have this toggled on. You can, if it is annoying or bothering, you can also um, just turn off the display. But basically, it knows, uh, it, it will try to know what sorts of types of things you're working with, even though I know Python isn't a type language, but uh, nice. it can be helpful. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let me quickly answer a couple of chats here. Uh, Natalie Vecton, yes, this video is going to be available later on. And also, uh, we're learning about Jupyter Notebooks and its use, it, its ability to be used with VS Code. Uh, that's answering Jaw Michael. Uh, I know I'm butchering some of these names. <laughs> uh, Jaw Michael. All right. And Sweet. we continue. Yeah, so um, we've got our API uh, object net or instance now. Uh, I'm going to do basically <laughs> the only interaction we need with it, which is uh, we will call this um, function called list for org, which basically the Jupyter org, we're going to pull all of the information about all the repos under the Jupyter org on GitHub. So uh, because that can be a long list, the API returns things paged. So you're going to get, you know, a chunk of 30 or 100 sort of entries at a time. So what we have to kind of do is unpack that here with a couple nested um, generators where basically we flip through the page and then we scan through everything on the page <laughs> to kind of flatten it all out into a list that we can work with um, for the rest of the notebook. Some other fun UI things here that I should mention. Uh, outline. Yeah, this is the one I wanted. Um, my notebook here is kind of short, <laughs> relatively speaking. Sorry. So, uh, have you have you experimented with uh, VS Code uh, online? VS Code Dev. Yes. So VS Code Dev is great and kind of code spaces, which I mentioned earlier, is kind of like the evolution of that, <laughs> um, which allows you to be more specific about kind of what, what sort of configuration or compute you need on the back end to run what's in your repo. Because VS Code.dev makes some assumptions sometimes uh, about what you might need to run the stuff if you're not doing anything too complicated. That usually works pretty well. I work on some projects that involve 
Rust, LVM, Python, C++, <laughs> and those are not simple setups. So uh, that's where having like code spaces or um, dev containers, which is another fun extension um, in VS Code that works with notebooks as well. Um, actually, I can just show that off right now. <laughs> uh, you can pick, you know, maybe I'm on a Windows machine right now, but maybe I want to actually run this uh, on my Windows subsystem for Linux, or maybe I have another machine I want to SSH into. I do this all the time with my Raspberry Pi, but I can basically just pick, um, and then containers here are like, I have Docker running on my machine. So um, these are some easy, convenient ways to get that remote compute also set up and configured, which and can work for your notebooks and anything else you're running. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So like if you're mm -hmm. on vs.dev, what has your experience been experimenting with uh, notebooks? Um, from it there? honestly, I I haven't had too many issues with it. Like, okay. uh, it all of all of this stuff should work in the browser just fine. I think the main kind of issues, some of which I filed recently, are when we get to some of the interactive widget stuff. So um, there there are some very advanced and uh, kind of complicated widgets for like doing image editing. Like you can actually embed something that's like a mini, you can have layers, you can like a mini Photoshop or something like that. You can, cause this is all basically just rendered HTML. So whatever you can put on a web page, you could probably fit in here. I'm not gonna right. say literally anything, but uh, sometimes some of those interactive widgets don't work the way you expect, but um, I'll show you an example. We've got an example here of kind of generating HTML reports and being able to work with them in here. So, and it looks uh, like yeah. I read somebody's mind because, like, right when we were answering this, uh, <laughs> inventors asked, "Does Jupyter Notebooks feature work well in VS Code on the web?" That's exactly what we've been answering, and it looks like mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I was just going to show like you can also, you know, just like you'd have like in a Word doc or something like that, you can look at an outline of the notebook. So sometimes my notebooks get very, very long. <laughs> so you can uh, kind of scroll around in the outline. Um, oh. Great. So now we've got our data. We've got this Jupyter repos list. Now, normally what I would do is like, you know, I am an awful print debugger. <laughs> So I would do something like, uh, you know, I could, I could print this, but uh, basically also just running this. Uh, it will give me the text representation. And it's like, okay, it's telling me this is a giant blob of text. I can see it's kind of like a list of probably dictionaries. This isn't super helpful because <laughs> when I do this, uh, I end up filling my notebook <laughs> with all of these printouts. And I have to then, you know, now I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So something that I have just absolutely, I'm trying, I can't remember when the feature was added, but um, basically you can view all of your variables that you have currently kind of um, defined in the session. If you go to uh, here up in the top bar, there's variables um, that'll pull up this panel here. Um, you, can, you can put it in other drag and move it different places if you don't want it on the bottom. But yeah, it actually just shows you, you know, okay, so we have that GH API thing. We have a generator, which was the actual result from the API call. And we did a list comprehension to get this uh, list, <laughs> which actually it notices, hey, this is a list of JSONs. And I can actually just show you that as like a, a full on table here. Let's get it full screen here. So that this data set that we're looking at right now, this is equivalent to the content that we were just looking at on JSON, the JSON. Exactly. And like, you know, sometimes you might do something like <clears throat> uh, list, you ask for like the first or second, you know, you ask for a slice of elements. Um, when we put this in a pandas data frame, you know, maybe you ask for the head of that. But here I can at least initially like, okay, did I get results from the API? <laughs> Do they look somewhat well-formed? Okay, there's a bunch of URLs and stuff. There's booleans. Okay, so. Can you search through that? You can, you can definitely search. Uh, you can, uh, you can sort. 
Although those are yes. <laughs> they're all public. Okay. They're all, <laughs> none are private because they're all public because that's what I'm scraping. Um, let's find something that actually. Uh, oh yeah, here. So like here's this is the stargazer count for the repo. So I can sort that. I can filter it. Um, doesn't. <laughs> Filtering works probably better for like categorical data. So like uh, has, let's see, has projects. So does the repo have projects on it? So if I do yes, or not yes, true. <laughs> yeah. Computer for yes. <laughs> oh no, I scrolled past it. On, Anyways, the newer, on the newer versions, I think it'll like uh, detect what you mean. It'll be like, like on Google, it'll be like, did you mean true? <laughs> um. Yeah, no, there there are some really exciting um, improvements coming to the sort of uh, view that were in a talk at um, Europi this year. So um, I will I will later find a YouTube link and I'll put it on my Twitter. <laughs> so check but my if Twitter. You were to, so you said you could uh, search through that. So like if you were to search just like across the data set, not necessarily like you're looking for something and you're not sure which column it's in, uh, would mm. it be like, F or you would have to know which column it's in and then try to filter it to fi find it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not actually sure searching in here. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure that works. I think you would, you can do filtering in columns, but you'd kind of have to probably know what column you're looking for. Okay. So in that case, we probably have to use like the the old JSON <laughs> and then just search through that, right? Yeah, and and we'll we'll use pandas to make that a lot easier. So I'm actually just gonna eat that cell because I hate scrolling past it. <laughs> so uh, we've got our data. We've got this kind of like there's a lot of stuff in that table. There's a lot of like endpoints for how we get more things. I don't want that. Um, mm -hmm. Oh no, my VS code crashed. <laughs> oh, it did. Second. I have a lot of things running on my laptop right now. So, this is actually uh, good because then when we bring it back up, we could see like what it uh, ends up saving, if anything. Do you know if it normally saves your information? Like uh, from the like, Jupyter Notebooks? Um, yeah, it'll generally save the output. Um, but honestly, okay, so I've, I've shared it again. Maybe the um, editors can pull it up <laughs> or producers can pull it up. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it does not. I think I hard crashed it, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, so, yep, we've still got our kernel selected. This gives me an opportunity, though, to then say, okay, I would actually like to, if I'm in this cell, I've had to restart my kernel. Uh, I can say execute all the cells above here. Okay. And then uh, it's just starting up the kernel down here that you can see. And then. So let, me, so let me ask, you're saying, did you say that you think it crashed because you had like a lot of other stuff going on on your computer or was it? Uh, I have probably close on like 200 browser tabs open right now. <laughs> tabs? I am the horrible person that uses them as like to do's. So if you keep, you know, like I can't close the tab until I've like closed the thought. So oh, uh, the... I closed a bunch of them. So hopefully that'll help. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that really like a lot of tabs and they, they could relate. And just like, yeah, baby. Like, yeah, all the tabs you want. <laughs> all the tabs every day. Tab, tab Thursday. Yeah, so you can see now everything's evaluated up here. Uh, you also may have seen kind of you get the spinny boy here if it's uh, executing. And then it'll also tell you how long it took. So um this is the longest thing, 2.8 seconds, because we're hitting the, the endpoint a bunch. So I'm sure people uh, can see that this is probably not great formatted code. I was kind of like copy and pasting from a bunch of different places. This is, mm -hmm. this is, this is what notebooks are for. It's for iterating and, and drafting things. But I'm not sure I would actually want to share this necessarily with my colleagues yet. <laughs> so something uh, 
else nice that we can do in Jupyter Notebooks is we can use, just like you use tools like linters and formatters on Python scripts, they mm -hmm. all work right here in Notebooks as well. So if I want to go um, format cell, um, I have uh, <laughs> I have black installed. Um, maybe try that one. Uh, but yeah, basically, it should then run black or the linter right on that cell. What's black? Uh, black is a very opinionated <laughs> Python code formatter. So you'll see it in a lot of like uh, CI pipelines. I think it's, it's, I feel like it's the most popular like Python code formatter, but it's also okay. very aggressive. <laughs> and, and that's basically and just because we don't want any more bike shedding arguments about like, should we do commas here or like, curly braces on the next line or whatever. Nope, black has we just, we've all agreed that black is gonna make that decision. <laughs> so you just, um, you just it right now to format it? Yeah, so it. yeah, if you open the command palette and you can go format cell, um, it looks like this one, I probably don't have uh, uh, flake eight or whatever I selected for the other one. Um, it probably doesn't remove blank lines, but uh, oh, I sorry, I see someone's comment about Rise slideshows. Um, there is a Rise. Um, so Rise is a, an extension for Jupyter Notebooks that basically allows you to take um, all of your cells and stuff like this and turn them into slides, which is, I use this all the time because then you have slides for your, for your talk, they're running in a browser and you can run code in them because the code is still runnable. Um, there's an extension. Uh, I I think it's still probably in development a bit, but that is definitely something that is on kind of on the radar to hopefully improve the experience on. So, okay, okay. so we form we formatted uh, the cell now. <laughs> one so. quick question. One quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Alex uh, Constantino asked: Is Vim plugin still slow with notebooks? Are you familiar with uh, Vim being really slow with notebooks? Um, I haven't benchmarked it recently. <laughs> so, so what they're talking about is uh, if you use other editors and stuff like that, like like Vim. Uh, I'm a nano if you make me. <laughs> um, but you can install a, an extension to VS Code that basically adds uh, all of the Vim keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. Um, I do know that. I have helped people file a couple bugs about that recently, but I don't know if it's slow so much as there's probably some conflicting keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> so you just have to like, uh, um, you can either manually resolve those or <laughs> nano. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vim is very intimidating and was part of that whole, when people were trying to teach me the command line, they're like, you must use Vim. And I'm like, okay, I will use something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I am not here to judge anyone's choice of editor. Uh, if it works to... for you, that's awesome. I'm not <laughs> it does not do... work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, sweet. So yeah, now we can we can format cells like this. Uh, we can linters will also. Uh, here's a good place to show um, just kind of like you would have uh, in most other IDEs for languages. You know, you have kind of like a. a problem. I have a lot of, pro I've got 20 problems here. <laughs> um, I probably have a lot more than this, but mm, we'll, we'll start with these. These I can click on <laughs> and uh, you can see this takes me to this line and it says, uh, PyLance is saying that it doesn't really know how to interpret the type for this call. And that kind of makes sense because this is, this package isn't terribly Pythonic. So PyLance is looking for kind of Python-like conventions. Um, so what I could do here is I can either, from here, you can say, see, it just gives me the option to tell it to be quiet <laughs> or suppress that because I, you know, I looked at it, I triaged it, and yeah, it kind of makes sense that maybe it can't figure out that type and I don't want to, now I only have 19 problems. <laughs> um, obviously, in general, it's not good to just like suppress all the warnings. <laughs> I was hoping it said um, you had 99 problems. 
Yeah. Well, when I'm working on things, so the, the other things that's showing up here, you can see that's most of the problems is uh, actually coming from my spell checker. So um, I'm, I'm not the best at spelling, uh, but basically you can uh, have, it is the uh, code spell check code spell checker. That's the one I want. Um, this is, this is great. This is usually the first extension I install on any VS code instance. Um, and it's, it's smart to different languages. So, um, it will, I mean, it's not going to flag any like built-in Python symbols and stuff, but these are like packages and stuff. Usually what I would do in these cases is, um, probably just add these to the dictionary, whether it's like my personal, like me using VS code or maybe something specific to the project. But yeah. So this is this is essentially like a high level IntelliSense, right? Or like IntelliSense like on steroids, just recognizing all these words it does pick so highlighting all these words it doesn't recognize for you to fix them, right? In this case, it's just flagging them for spelling reasons. Um, IntelliSense here, uh, <laughs> uh, let's, so we'd like to save them. Let's just do the save and reopen, please. Uh, okay. What, what just happened there? <laughs> I think I have I have um, greatly upset the code coding <laughs> gods of coding. <laughs> uh, I actually I think it was trying to populate actually a message about one of these errors and um, got very confused. So when in doubt, <laughs> as as with anything, you like close it, close it, and reopen it. Um, but you were saying that this. Uh basically points out right now it's pointing out spelling errors but it, it can also detect like logic errors yep exactly so here uh mostly what pylance is telling us about right here is stuff about types this one says that um df is not defined um that's correct because that was the name of a variable that i changed earlier on, that i was using before and uh probably need to actually change so uh, okay. Let's actually fix that. Uh, I think I changed that to Jupiter. Uh, oops. I wanted to have it do though. Was uh, uh, so this is the real, real. <laughs> this is the IntelliSense, and probably one of the biggest reasons I use um, Jupiter Notebooks in VS Code, uh, which is all of the things that you'd kind of fancy things that you would expect out of editing Python scripts, you know, where it gives you, so here are the, the variables that are already defined. If I want to do something with this, not that I want to pass it into the function like this, but I can, it just automatically looks up in the docs, can tell me, uh, you know, what functions or methods I can apply if I start opening a parentheses and need to add arguments, it will pop up, uh, you know, this, the docs on that thing um, can show me. So here it's saying add a function. So there's tons and tons of information that this just surfaces for me right away <laughs> without having to like Google the docs, go to the docs, right. have now window open, go back and forth. So now because like a little built in IDE in there, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is, and, and the kind of, uh, Engine, so PyLance is kind of what's behind uh, the IntelliSense for that. And it is really, really good. Like there is, it's pretty smart. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, depending on the structure of the packages you're using, it's not getting the best information. <laughs> so it it is not, if the information it's not getting is, if the information it's getting is not good, it is hard for it to do cool inferences. But for things... <laughs> It'd be cool to have like a day in the life of the people that actually design these hardcore uh, apps, you know, well, these hardcore like uh, plugins that does all this uh, work. Um, one of our, uh, somebody from the chat right now, uh, George GBD says, uh, can I have a notebook with tabs like 
a one notebook with code and data associated? Mm. Is there a way to configure it like that? Or is, or is that something that a new feature has to come out with that? So notebooks don't have kind of a, a concept of additional tabs. I think, you know, probably and frequently I have multiple notebooks open. So if I wanted to actually just make a new book, new notebook here, I could go uh, create Jupyter new notebook. And then, <laughs> oh, look, I have tabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same as what you're you're looking for. I get that. Um, I think probably the closest thing is like uh, I use the markdown headings as kind of like things that I can expand and contract. So, you know, if I had a section, I could you know put stuff in there and then hide it and keep working on other things. But um, and you can also uh, drag and move the cells around. That's a, another nice nice thing. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's actually, because I am conscious of time here, let's, <laughs> we've been, part of what, what's cool here is actually looking at like all the UI elements and stuff. So like highly encourage if you have notebooks or have, have favorite projects uh, online that you want to download a notebook and try out with this, definitely do that. Um, there isn't really anything special about the data I have here. Um, no, no secret tricks encoded in that to make it work nice. Um, so what we've done now is we've actually made a pandas data frame, uh, which as mentioned before, pandas is a really popular Python package, basically for doing all kinds of data manipulation. We said, take all of that data that we um, had just scraped from the API. And there's there was a lot of columns, right? A lot of them. So we basically just said, okay, I want to actually just have particular columns. Now, this isn't really great code because uh, we've done something where we have a dictionary here, <laughs> a dictionary of strings to strings, as it's helpfully uh, reminding us. Uh, and then I'm like taking the keys and then turning that into a list. I was trying something with this as a dictionary before and it didn't work. So that could be confusing to someone looking at my code. So I'm going to do something and let's see if I can <laughs> muscle memory these keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so uh -huh. I, don't, I, I hate extra keystrokes. <laughs> so if I want to do something fast, I'm going to make me a giant cursor like this <laughs> and do multi-line edits. So uh, all right, now we're, <laughs> we're closer. You know, maybe I want this is how I've formatted it. Um, but I actually don't want to do that yet. The other way, I want to turn this into a list. So uh, by doing control D, I can basically, you can see it's selecting every one of the little colons. Uh, if I go back one, hold down shift, hold down control shift and try to select everything here. And I go backspace, and then I do this, and I go, nope, comma, and then I hit delete. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I forgot it was on the next line. Anyway, uh, point being, you can do use all of the cool uh, VS Code um, keyboard shortcuts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the, the multi-line editing that some people use in VS Code, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I do not have enough coffee yet to do that uh, perfectly. So we've got all this data in here. Um, we can use things in pandas to just kind of like figure out what would be interesting to look at. Um, methods like describe I'll give you some summary statistics about numeric columns. So you can see there's 82 repos uh, in the Jupyter org. Uh, some of them got lots of stars, 13K stars. Um, and we can also look at something like, uh, you know, what sorts of data types are in each of these. These are the columns. Um, and this kind of makes sense. Uh, but something, we know some of these are actually strings, but the one that isn't actually a string is these license, um, is the license column. So if I go to, uh, if I do, do yeah. And I do, I look, that just basically grabs me a row in the column, uh, or sorry, a row in the table. 
Um, and then I ask for um, license. Spell license. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, L I C. I think it's ah. messing. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, all right, that's okay. That, that one does not have a license. Let's go for this one. Okay. So you can see the elements in this column are again, another dictionary. So what we can actually do is we could write a function uh, to do that. Um, I kind of already did, but other, other nice things about editing Python in these notebooks is you can use other extensions like auto docs. Uh, I think it's just auto docs. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I have that extension installed and I can ask it to generate a doc string. If I just put the, my cursor right after the, the function definition and you can see it actually looks at that and sees that I have inputs, grabs the types and actually has formatted this all so that I can tab through and actually uh, say, what my data is. Um, and then, then you've got your doc string all ready to go. So um, obviously in notebooks, you know, we have kind of this other, the other markdown cells and stuff for writing documentation. But if I'm defining functions and stuff, I still probably want to do my, my normal, <laughs> um, like actual documentation strings for those sorts of things. So right. um, we'll, we'll define that function. And then we actually just called it immediately and said, all right, we want to split up the license column. And here I want to, um, the keys in that license column kind of don't make sense if I remove them from the context of license. <laughs> so I just want to map the names there. And okay. uh, yeah. The last, at least, super cool thing is um, I'm using one of those cool widget uh, and or fancy notebook output uh, packages called Pandas Profiling. Um, it's taking it a minute because it's doing a lot, but it will basically generate a report that we can explore our data. Um, like every, every plot or every comparison <laughs> that you could want to make. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, it will tell us. So it, we've got, this has <sighs> confusing uh, at the zoom level. Uh, so we have different sections here I can go to, but this goes through every variable or every column we have in the table. Um, thankfully, none of the projects have a missing name. Um, they all have unique URLs, that makes sense. But the you know if I went to something interesting like, uh, you can see these are, it gives us distributions of different things. Uh, but like if we wanted to look at what languages were associated with those, it's already made all those kind of plots that I can just look at quick. Um, I can, yeah, so it, it's really nice, uh, for actually just being able to see what you got <laughs> before you start writing code to do stuff like make your plots. So, and people that don't know about the, that, um, extension uh, is going to think that you spent like hours putting those charts together. Exactly. <laughs> it's the best time saver. Um, and then whenever you actually generate plots and stuff, uh, the last uh, nice thing here is you can actually, there's built into VS code notebook stuff. You can have it just immediately save out an image. So you don't have to like add to the Python script, save image, and then the figure and the path name. It just, it just gives you that right off the bat. So yeah. Very nice. Well, this is, this has been cool. Was that the last thing you were going to show? Because we're, we're kind of uh, running short on time. Yeah, I know we're out of time. <laughs> um, I'm looking through the rest here. Uh, actually, I think because someone was asking about it earlier, the last thing I'll show is um, notebook diffs. So I think this is probably the biggest, some of the biggest complaints and or issues with working with notebooks, period, which is it's really hard to tell when things change. So uh, you can see. Actually, let me save it. <laughs> That's probably why no changes are showing up. Um, but yeah, here we go. So it just like I would pull up a diff on a regular file, it shows me changes in code. Okay, so I 
added a line there. <laughs> um, here, I added that like type comment out. Um, but it also tracks things like metadata and output. So like if you rerun a cell or something like that and it has a new output from the last time, you would see changes and stuff uh, for each cell. But I think this is a <laughs> uh, I think this is a great way to kind of deal with some of those issues about tracking changes when you are using notebooks in in version control. There are lots of other tools and other cool things that people have developed to fix this, but that's a quick I one like right this. now. Arsenal can make life a little bit easier, right? Oh yeah, for sure. No. So. We all appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, so what I'd like to do before we uh, wrap things up is just give us our, uh, give you a, a couple of lightning round questions, right? So you have like three, like three seconds to answer. Really just two okay. seconds. Okay. Right off the top of, of your head. All right. That's your heart beating right now. Does this make you nervous? <laughs> I promise to bring it. <laughs> Okay, uh, first question. What was the toughest technical problem that you've had to face and solve right away? Just really quick. Getting uh, a USB device to uh, reverse engineering USB driver or uh, communication protocols. Great, question two. Uh, one superpower you could choose right now to have, what would it be? Uh, telekinesis. Great. Um, and uh, last question. To put it to rest, is it GIF or GIF? It's GIF. <laughs> GIF is a peanut butter. <laughs> Don't at me on Twitter. <laughs> All right. A bunch of people having aneurysms right now. <laughs> no! Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah, for the presentation. All right. This has been a great. If anyone wants to follow you, you know, um, what's your what's your social media? Do you want to share? Uh, my handle is crazy the number four pi three one four everywhere. So crazy for pi. Uh, I memorized a lot of pi as a kid, and that was my first internet username, and it stuck. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I want to thank everybody for joining the live stream. Producer, if you could put up our social media information, I'd like everybody to be able to just follow us not only on uh, YouTube, but we also have our TikTok channel. Um, so check that out in the show descriptions and it's probably gonna pop up right now in a couple of seconds. Um, but that is it for now. And I will see you guys on the next live stream. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Uh, <laughs> All right. See you.